There are so many things in Starfield that the game never tells you. Little secrets that make the game so much easier that I had to share them all with you in this video. We've got 13 total secrets in all to unravel and each one gets progressively more useful. So make sure to watch all the way till the end. Number 13 is absolutely insane. But first up, let's talk about the constellation watch that ends up being part of your heads up display in Starfield. This gives you a quick readout on your current planet's environment and even your oxygen level. But it's better use in my opinion is for exploring planets when you're on the surface. And that's because your watch also displays small dots on the outer ring, which symbolize points of interest that are available on the planet for you to discover. Simply turn your character in that direction and start moving forward to get there. The small dot will gradually get larger the closer you get. And once you arrive, the dot will be replaced with a new icon representing whatever is at that location. You can also verify this by pulling up your scanner, which will give you a relative distance to that new location. And if you open the surface map, you will see the location there as well. And by the way, on the surface map, you can also place custom markers and these show up on your watch as well. Those have the large square icon. Now that is not all. Your constellation watch also shows you when your character is injured. Specifically here, you can see it shows icons for various status effects that you might have been afflicted with that are actually very easy to miss, especially if you get these during combat. For example, here I have a yellow icon for hypothermia and a blue icon for a sprain. And this can be confirmed by checking your character sheet, which shows you a larger icon and the name of the affliction. Now, some of these are not a big deal, but others you do want to cure as soon as possible. And to cure these, you can use a number of different consumable aid items, but reading every single one of these is a chore. Instead, all you need to do is just look for that same matching icon to your injury, which also gets displayed on the aid item itself. The color coding here makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for. Simply browse through and match up the colors to find your cure. And panaceas, by the way, are the best as these cure all affliction types. Now, once you've discovered a nearby point of interest, you'll no doubt go in guns blazing or maybe take a more stealthy approach to systematically clear out each enemy. But how do you know if you've seen all there is to see in that location? Well, Starfield also includes a handy exploration percentage for each and every point of interest in the game. Simply access that surface level map again and you'll notice that your new location either says explored or it gives you a percent explored. So if you have that percentage show up, you know there's still something left to uncover in that specific location. Usually this has to do with some extra rooms that you have not entered yet. So go back through, check again, and who knows, you might even find some more loot. Now, while you're out exploring, you're bound to come across plenty of locked doors and containers. I personally love how lock picking works in Starfield, but I do still occasionally slip up here and there and make a few mistakes. Now you would think in that case, the best thing to do is use the undo option, but actually every undo costs one extra digipick. So you'll probably burn through at least maybe two to three picks this way, which quickly adds up and leaves you out of picks entirely. And even then you might still get it wrong. So the better method I think is you can actually leave the lock entirely rather than using undo. And the thing about this is it only costs one digi pick to leave and restart the lock. Plus you're gonna get a completely new variation of that lock at random, which is often easier than whatever version you are stuck on first, which was giving you the problem in the first place. But the real secret to successfully picking locks in Starfield is this blue circle right here. Now, what is this? Well, it's actually part of the rank two of the security skill. And what this does is it highlights every ring where a specific key can be used. For example, when I select this first key option, every ring turns blue. And what this means is that this key could work potentially anywhere on this lock. So it isn't really helping me narrow things down at all. Instead, I want to cycle through every single key until I find one that only turns my current ring blue. If I can find one, it means that this key works on the current ring and nowhere else, making it the best option to use at that particular layer. Now, sometimes keys will work in multiple rings at once, so you can't use this trick every time, but it does tend to work out more often than not and gives you a better understanding of which key to use where. Also, don't forget to use those banked auto attempts, which immediately give you a correct placement. I like to save those for master locks to help unlock the first few circles right away. Something I struggled with early on in Starfield was definitely finding enough ammo for my weapons. The problem is that most enemies in Starfield, especially early on, only use a few very basic types of weapons, specifically the Grendel and the Maelstrom. 
so you'll get tons of ammo for those two guns and not much else in between. However, you can get most types of ammo from almost any vendor in Starfield's main cities, like New Atlantis for example, and to get unlimited ammo of whatever type you want, all you need to do is wait nearby for 24 hours and anything you bought out previously is going to restock itself. Now, this works for all vendors like I said, but a very easy vendor for this is found in the Well District. This is right next to the elevator. And what's nice about this vendor is there's a chair right behind this guy. So all you have to do is buy up all the ammo that you need, then wait here in the chair for 24 hours, come back to him, buy as much more ammo as you want until you are fully stocked. This trick also works for restocking consumables like digipicks, med packs, and even the vendor's total credits will reset. So if you have a lot of items you need to sell, this is a good trick for that as well. Speaking of resting, hopefully you know by now the importance of being well rested. You can sleep in a bed or a cot or anything that's nearby and you're going to get a 10% bonus to experience. But you can also increase this bonus further to 15% if you happen to have a companion nearby who you've gone through their companion missions and you have a committed relationship with. In that case, you can see that well rested message actually updates at this point. It becomes a little bit different. And if you review your stat sheet, you'll see the extra bonus you get here. I also think this buff lasts a little bit longer than well rested too, but I'm not completely sure. Let me know in the comment section if you know the answer to that. And speaking of companions, there is one more thing here that the game doesn't really explain. That is that you can equip your companions with specific weapons and armor while trading with them so they can gain some different bonuses, but also so you can just change their appearance away from their default look. The way Starfield handles this is a little bit confusing because the game will show you as the player equipping these items, but the equip button here is actually connected to your companion. It actually equips them instead. So just make sure to check the name on the top of the inventory you're looking at so you know for sure. Uh, and then once you equip your companion with either those weapons or those spacesuits or helmets or clothing, you'll see the difference right away once you exit that inventory screen. I want to move on to ships next because they are definitely one of the more challenging aspects of Starfield, especially when we're talking about ship combat. Now if you want to practice battling ships in a safe way, Bethesda actually added a flight simulator to Starfield and you can use that to practice as much space combat as you want. The ship combat simulator is located in the mass district of New Atlantis so it's easy to access right from the start of the game. And what's even crazier about this is the ships that you destroy here count towards leveling up your ship skills, like for example, piloting. So if you're looking to level up those skills early with no danger or cost to yourself, or you just want to practice your ship fighting skills, I definitely recommend you check this out. Now, even with practice, you're still going to get into some rough ship to ship combat in Starfield, especially if you're out exploring the higher level systems in the game. But if you come across something you just can't defeat or you just want to move on, you can actually use your grav jump to escape combat completely. As long as you haven't taken too much damage yet, go into your galaxy menu and choose a different planet in a completely different system. It has to be in a new system, otherwise this will not work. Then return to combat and divert as much power as you can to your grav drive. The more power your drive has, the faster you will then jump out of that planet's orbit to a completely new system. And then you can just continue on playing as if nothing ever happened. And of course, something I love in Starfield is that you can collect multiple ships for yourself, either by finding them, earning them as rewards, or just outright stealing them. Now, eventually you'll get more ships in your fleet than you know what to do with. So selling some of those is a great way to make extra credits easily. To sell a ship in Starfield, you'll need to first fly it to a nearby spaceport and then pay the registration fee, usually a few thousand credits to add that ship to your fleet. Once that's done, you're going to ask the ship technician to see other ships for sale. And it's in this ship buying screen where you will have the option of selling any of your own ships for profit. Now you can even buy your ships back if you end up changing your mind, but that is going to be at a much higher price than what you were paid for that ship to sell. So be sure you want to sell off any ship before you make that final decision. And I really wish I had learned more about bounties in Starfield early on because I eventually got a bounty with the United Colonies that made me kill on sight in New Atlantis and it was just not a fun time. 
So if this has happened to you or just as a preventative measure so it doesn't happen in the future, here is a very easy solution for you. All you need to do is create a basic outpost literally anywhere in the galaxy. Set down your beacon and you can add anything else you want, maybe a habitat, some furniture, whatever. But what we really want here is a self-service bounty clearance station. This is the same panel which you can find in major cities like New Atlantis, but obviously if you accidentally get a bounty with the UC, then you wouldn't be able to use that New Atlantis bounty clearance in the first place. So this is a nice safety measure, a nice precaution, so you can always come back to your outpost to clear out any accidental bounties you might get during the course of your playthrough without having to worry about being attacked in the process. And our final and definitely the biggest secret on this list has to do with farming legendary items in Starfield. This is a big one, so before we get there, if you found any of this information helpful, do me a huge favor and anti-gravity punch that like button to let YouTube know to share this video with others. It is much appreciated. Also, if you're enjoying the helpful Starfield guides, think about subscribing to the channel because more are on the way. Now, there are many legendaries to be found in the game as a result of specific missions, but there are also random legendaries. And to find these random items, you're going to need to first find specific enemies. And you'll be able to recognize these by their additional health bars indicated by the red bars underneath the usual white bar. These enemies have a lot more health than usual. Sometimes they move around a bit more. The AI seems a little bit different, but regardless, they're still pretty easy to defeat. Now, legendary enemies like this are going to appear at random for you, but they are more likely to appear at higher game difficulty levels, especially the very hard difficulty level. So if legendaries is your goal, you'll definitely want to ramp up that difficulty. Now, every one of these special enemies has a chance of dropping rare, epic, or even legendary items. And you can even save right before killing that enemy and just reload your game if you don't get a specific drop that you want. Now, I tested this for about 10 minutes on the same enemy, seeing what type of drop I got and then reloading and repeating that process over and over again. In total, I ended up with lots of blues, a few purples, and three legendary items. So your success may vary, but this is something you can do anytime to improve your overall loadout. And sometimes it's fun just to see what kind of random drops you can get. But that is it, everybody. 13 secrets Starfield never tells you about. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you like this, you'll definitely want to watch my videos on the best Starfield builds to try and the best Starfield skills that you need to take right now. So click on one of those next and I will see you there.